the second Sunday in Lent. Year B. From the book of Genesis. As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. In the name of the God of covenants, even the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our readings for this week focus on Abraham and Sarah's faith in God's promise to make them the ancestors of nations. Paul wants the Romans to notice that Abraham did not weaken in faith when he considered the unlikelihood that either his body or Sarah's, burdened with age, would be suitable for childbearing. What Paul does not articulate here in the letter to the Romans, however, is the degree to which the righteousness of faith is more than a one-and-done kind of virtue. It isn't simply that Abraham and Sarah chose to trust God in this particular instance, but that they have chosen again and again and again to trust God, (laughs) however imperfectly, in all sorts of circumstances where the likelihood of fulfillment or even of survival had been put in jeopardy. Though this one instance of Abraham and Sarah's faith makes them the ancestors of Isaac, it is that ever repeated choice of faith that makes them the ancestors of nations. Moreover, the fulfillment of God's promise sometimes comes after God has sent us in what seems to be the opposite direction, or required us to compromise what would seem to be the tools with which we should participate in the process. Faithfulness is not merely the mental assent to the idea that God's promises are true, but also the commitment of our souls and bodies to a reality we cannot yet see for ourselves. When Jesus rebukes Peter for setting his mind not on divine things but on human things, the test of Peter's faith has been the requirement that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Belief in the resurrection of the dead requires the willingness to face death, knowing that even those who sleep in the earth bow down in worship of our God, that all who go down to the dust fall before him. The commandment to take up our cross is a commandment to embrace this radical vulnerability to death that is our inheritance as descendants of Abraham and Sarah. Let our souls therefore live for God. As descendants of Abraham, let us serve him that we may be known as the Lord's forever. In the name of that Lord, even the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.